Okay, in this video, we are gonna do part two of a ton of series multiple choice questions. We're prepping for the AP Calculus BC exam or just Calc 2 uh, practice problems. Uh, and I'm gonna to try to do nine problems and let's see how it goes. So part one, uh, I don't know, they're probably all on a playlist uh, or linked below or linked above, who knows? Uh, let's take a look at the problem. Which of the following series converge? All right, so. We're looking for convergence. Uh, ideally, these are just geometric um, or P-series. In this case, one is, is almost a P-series, but not really. And then three is also almost a P-series, but not really. So we're going to have to do a little bit of work on those. Two is geometric, though. So for number one, uh, it's the absolute value of sine of n over n squared. Well, one thing we know for sure is that sine is between negative one and one which means the absolute value of sine is between zero and one, which means we can write this down. The absolute value of sine of n over n squared is less than or equal to one over n squared. And since one over n squared converges, p series p equals two, um, this converges. So that converges. Uh, number two is actually geometric, but I'm gonna rewrite it anyway. So I like my geometric series to look like geometric series and e to the negative n doesn't really look like it. One over e to the n does look like it. This is geometric with r equals one over e. One over e is less than one, which means this converges. All right, and now option three is the one that uh, once you get used to it, these are pretty straightforward. Until then, they're a little not straightforward. So I'm gonna say that n plus two over n squared plus n is basically the same. It's not really the same, but it's basically the same as one over n. Now, where am I getting that from? I'm looking at only the dominant terms in the numerator and the den denominator. Right? n plus 2, I can ignore the 2. n squared plus n. n squared grows so much faster than n that when you go out to infinity, you can just ignore that n. So now I just have n over n squared. n over n squared is 1 over n. 1 over n diverges, so this is not going to converge. If you need to do the work, you can do the limit comparison test. But the limit comparison test is, again, just going to give you that the limit is 1 I would say when you set up the limit comparison test correctly, you almost always just get one as the answer. I mean, like, not really, but like, kind of. Um, and one is positive and finite, so both series do the same thing. So one over n diverges, so so does this. So we're looking for um, things that converge, converge. So we want one and two. I actually get a lot of multiple choice questions wrong by answering the wrong question. Like the question will be converge and I'll answer diverge or diverge and I'll answer converge. Or maybe I'm like, I tend to think of convergence as more optimistic and I almost always go with, you know, the convergence one. So maybe I'm just like an optimistic series person. Who knows? All right, next up. Which of the following converge? And also the question is almost always converge. So it does like lull you into a sense of security. All right, I see. Number one is a P series. Number two, uh, I probably use the ratio test. I mean, I think it converges. And then three is geometric. So these are the things you gotta know if you're gonna be successful in these. So the first one, uh, P is equal to one half. One half is less than one, which means uh, this is a divergent P series. And there you go, we already know that that diverges. Number two, I'm thinking this definitely converges because of the location of the factorial. We ran into that a couple times in the previous video. Um, if you had to, you would do the ratio test on this. So here's the work for that. I'm not gonna make you watch me do this because you can pause, rewind, slow down, whatever you wanna do. Uh, this will simplify to just three over n plus one. If n goes to infinity, that's zero, which is less than one, so it converges for all values, or converges. Sorry, there's no x there. Um, and then the third one is actually geometric. They like to make you compare e and pi, so just remember e is less than pi, e squared is greater than pi. Those are like two facts that are probably very useful. Um, so r is equal to e over pi. That is less than one. Therefore, the series converges. We are looking for converges. So two and three converge. I think the answer is going to be e. All right, new problem. What are all values of p for which the series uh, one over n to the two p plus n diverges? All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with like dominant terms. I'm just gonna ignore that n. Um, but I'm a little, I'm like a little worried about that, but not totally. I'm gonna ignore it for now and just say this thing, if it were just one over n to the two p, would diverge when that exponent is less than or equal to one. So I'm gonna say this diverges 
for 2p less than or equal to 1, which means p is less than or equal to 1 half. Um, but what if I'm not sure about that? Well, if you think about it, imagine that you had 1 over n cubed plus n, and then we just ignore the n, right? That's 1 over n cubed, which would definitely converge because it's p series with p equals 3, which is greater than 1. So that's my logic here. I'm ignoring the n initially, but the n is actually important because say I had um, 1 over n plus n, that'd be 1 over 2n, which is just the harmonic series basically. So that would diverge. So really it's that 2p is the important thing. You can ignore the n, but like you should also think about it. So this will give me that p is less than or equal to 1, half, not 1. Um, so I'm going to say that the answer here is a. But what I've done is I've focused on the dominant term, right? So n squared plus n, n squared is the dominant term. Um, and so I would ignore everything after that. So in this case, n to the 2p is the only thing that could vary, right? Because it's plus n. I don't know, like if, so say p is equal to, I don't know, zero, right? If p is equal to zero, then we get one over one plus n, and then the n becomes the dominant term. That's essentially what happens is if if 2p is, or rather if p is less than or equal to one half, n becomes dominant, and we're gonna diverge um, if, you know, if 2p, whatever. You, you know what I'm saying, right? Like that's, that's how that inequality is working out. All right, number 13. Which of the following series converge? A theme. Let's just keep figuring these out. All right, the first one is a P series, but we're gonna rewrite it. We're gonna write it one over N root N as one over N to the three halves. Three halves is greater than one, so this thing converges. Number two is geometric, which is like, you know, you, you hope for that. Geometric, R is one third, one third is less than one, this converges, nice. Now three is again, we ran into one over the natural log of N plus one in a previous video, and that diverged. Natural, natural log in the denominator like kind of tends to diverge, um, but you can't really generalize like that. But I'm thinking this diverges. For this particular one, I would use, uh, so I would use, what would I use? I, I mean, I would use the integral test. I'm thinking, could I have used the ratio test? Uh, I think the ratio test would just give me one, uh, which is inconclusive. So yeah, I'm gonna use the integral test on this. I'll show the work for it. Um, but my answer for converge would be one and two, because I'm pretty confident that three diverges. Here comes the work. So I go two to infinity. Now, why am I going from two to infinity? Because I don't think this thing should have started at one to begin with. I think that's a typo on my part because the natural log of one is zero. And so you're dividing by zero. So you can't start there anyway. Uh, so I think that was a typo. So two to infinity. Now on the AP exam, they're really picky. Not on multiple choice. No one cares about your work on multiple choice. Just answer the questions. But on the free response, you have to use the correct notation. So we have to use the limit as B approaches infinity two to B. And then this, I would let u equal natural log of x. I would integrate, get the limit as b approaches infinity of this. I would sub in. Then if b goes to infinity, the natural log of the natural log of infinity is infinity. So this gives us infinity, which diverges, and therefore the series diverges. But I already kind of suspected that. And on multiple choice, you kind of want to hit and move. Like you think it diverges, you know, mark it down. If you have time, go back and like do the work if you need to. But I was like pretty convinced this would diverge. Also, you can kind of like work out the integral in your head and just say like, if I did the integral, I would get a natural log of something. And then if I go to infinity, it's infinity. You don't have to do perfect work on multiple choice, but it's up to you. All right, number 14, which of the following series converges? But it's not like one, two, one, two, three. So in theory, we don't have to do all of them, but in practice, you have to look at all of them anyway. Um, so three N over N plus two, uh, you know, the limit is not zero. 3n over n squared is basically 1 over n. 3n over n squared is basically 1 over n. 3n squared over n cubed is basically 1 over n. 3n squared over n to the fourth is 1 over n squared. I think e is the answer. And that's kind of how I would do the work. Now, here's what I said. I said the limit here is 3, which that's the nth term test for divergence. Here I looked at only dominant terms, and I said this is basically 1 over n. It's like 3 times 1 over n, but still 1 over n diverges. This again is just, you know, three over n, but really one over n diverges. And this was uh, three over n again, but basically diverges. Whereas this one gave me one over n squared, and so converges. 
All right, new problem. We're just doing a lot of multiple choice problems. I mean, that's that's it. I'm like assuming that you already know most of the material and you're just looking for practice and like how I'm handling the questions. So that's kind of how I'm answering them. I have a lot of videos where I like go over how to do all these things and like what they mean, where they come from. This is more about like, you know, crunch time practice. All right. What are all values of P for which the infinite series, I have a typo here. Uh, I, I switched the series with, you know, whatever. Where the infinite series uh, N over N to the P plus one converges. All right, we're doing the thing, right? We got that plus one there. And that's just messing things up. So I'm gonna just get rid of it. I'm gonna look at the series uh, N over N to the P. Because by limit comparison, the given series will do the same thing as this series. Now, ordinarily in algebra, you wanna bring things into the numerator, right? Make this like N to the one minus P. But when you're dealing with series, you wanna bring things into the denominator because P series, geometric series, like things should be living in denominators. So I get one over N to the P minus one. This is a P series. I just need that exponent um, to be greater than one if this thing is gonna converge. So I need P minus one to be greater than one. So I need P to be greater than two. And that's the answer. There's nothing more to do. So don't get hung up with the name P series. Uh, you know, it's N to the P is like the general form, but it's N to the whatever. And then you have to make sure that whatever is greater than one. So in this case, P minus one had to be greater than one. All right, number 16, which of the following series diverge? All right, so I have to keep that in mind because I'm inclined to just think all series questions are about convergence. Um, so diverge, all right. Uh, and it's a one, two, three type problem again. Number one is sine of two over pi to the n. All right, so we've dealt with sine of n and we said sine of n was between negative one and one, and then there was an absolute value, so it was between zero and one. I think it was in this video. Um, but definitely we know that uh, the sine of two, or at least the absolute value of sine of two, if you're not sure if two is in the first, well, actually it's either in the first or second quadrant of the unit circle, so it's definitely positive, but the absolute value of sine of two is less than one, that's important, which means that the absolute value of the ratio, this is geometric, just weird looking geometric, um, is less than one. And if your geometric and uh, the ratio is less than one, you converge. And the question is about diverging, so this is not the answer. If one of the answers had been one only, I probably would have picked it, moved on, and never known that I did it wrong. Um, and that's bad. So pay attention to what you're actually reading while you do these. All right, number two is a P series. But with this P series, I like to rewrite my radicals because I do. I don't know. Uh, so one over the cube root of n, I'm going to write as one over n to the one third, and then p is one third, which is less than one. And if p is less than one, you diverge. So that diverges. So that's part of our answer. Um, and then three is uh, so when I'm dealing with these, if I look at a series and I can't figure out what it is immediately. You know, is it like P series, geometric series? Would I limit compare? Like if I immediately don't think of something, that's when I say to myself, I bet the limit is not zero, right? This is an nth term test problem. So I'm gonna take the limit as n approaches infinity of e to the n over e to the n plus one. That's definitely just one. Um, and that's not zero. And therefore this diverges as well. The question is about divergence. So I'm gonna say, what am I gonna say? I'm gonna say C. All right, new problem. The infinite series, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity. I struggle with k's. I pretty much make them all n's as I do these, which can be confusing because it uh, has nth partial sum. So it's k goes from 1 to infinity of a sub k, has nth partial sum, s sub n, negative 1 to the n plus 1. That was hard for me to like read. I was like, where's the rest of it? Negative 1 to the n plus 1 for n greater than or equal to 1. What is the sum of the series? And I guess I cut off the... Um, Oh no, it's on like the next line there. I thought I like cut off the question mark. What is the sum of the series from one to infinity a sub k? All right, so if the partial sums are negative one to the n plus one, all we need to do is find the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence of partial sums, and that should be the sum of the series. That's where you like develop the idea of the sum of a series. So I need to find this limit. Uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n is limit as n approaches infinity of negative one to the n plus one. 
But that doesn't have a limit, right? Because it doesn't settle down. You're always bouncing between negative one, positive one, negative one, positive one. It doesn't have a finite value. So this limit doesn't exist, which means that the series doesn't have a sum. So the series diverges. All right, I'm gonna do one more problem in this video, I think. And that question is, for what values of P will both series one over n to the two p, so that's p series, and p over two to the n, that's geometric, converge. So we need to remember what it means for p series to converge, and we need to remember what it means for geometric to converge. All right, so first up, the p series. A p series converges when the exponent is greater than one. The exponent is two p, so I need two p to be greater than one, or p to be greater than one half. All right, now, the geometric series. Geometric series converge when the absolute value of the ratio is less than one. So when the absolute value of p over two is less than one, or when the absolute value of p is less than two, or when p is between negative two and two. All right, now we just gotta combine these. I like to write them out on a number line so that I like know that I'm getting it right. I mean, you can like just look at it and see, uh, but my number line would have uh, negative two and two from the geometric, and then I know for geometric I need to be between those values, so I'm, my answer is somewhere in between those. Then for the P series, uh, I have one half and I need P to be greater than one half, so I need that part. So my answer is going to be in between them, not including them. Um, and in between them, not including, including them is not an option, which would have been a really good wrong answer choice, I think. Um, but I think that my answer is going to be C because that's in between and not including. All right, so that is video two in this series. I'm gonna do 71 multiple choice questions. I should have just found a 70 second, so I'm doing nine in each, but whatever. Uh, I'll be back in the next video. Go watch the first video. Uh, watch the whole playlist, very helpful. Hope you found this helpful and good luck.